Hello everyone and welcome to the next edition of the BioExcel webinar series. My name is Rosan Apostolov and I will be the host of today's talk. Today we will have Vanya Calandrini uh, who will tell us about uh, some methods for hybrid molecular mechanics and cross-grain approaches to modeling of proteins. Before we start, I have to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and we will publish a recording of the webinar on the BioXL website and also on our YouTube channel, which you can watch later at your convenience. And you're welcome to, to share the, the recording with your colleagues or friends. A very brief uh, overview of uh, BioXL, which is uh, the European Center of Excellence for Computational Biomolecular Research, and we are the organizers of this series. A few words about our work for those of you who are not familiar with it. We, we work with several very important applications in the area of molecular modeling simulations, such as uh, Gromax for MD simulations, Haddock for integrative modeling and docking, and CPMD for hybrid QMMM methodology for enzymatic reactions, for example. We also work a lot on usability with device different workflows, with associated data integration, we use several platforms and we develop, we're working on a number of use cases and pilot projects about which you can read more on our website that make it very easy for people to, to build on. We also put a lot of effort into training and consultancy. We have an extensive training program with various workshops, hands-on, bring your own workflow uh, sessions, etc. that uh, we believe will be of interest to the community. So have a look at our website for the upcoming events next year. We have uh, quite a few uh, workshops that you might be interested in attending. One more activity that we do is we run a number of interest groups which focus on specific areas that uh, we have uh, expertise and uh, we have for example on integrative modeling or concerned with docking around Haddock, free energy calculations which are also very important nowadays for uh, drug design and what's most probably of interest to you is the hybrid methods for biomolecular systems where we look exactly at things that you will hear about today. So visit our website and you can subscribe to some of these uh, use groups. We have also forums called repositories and a chat channel which you are very welcome to use. One more thing, at the end of today's presentation we will have a questions and answers session where you can speak directly with Vanya and ask any questions you have regarding the material. Uh, I will encourage you to write your questions in the control panel section. To the, to the right you can uh, see it as there are points. So type your question there during the talk and at the end I will give you the microphone to speak up. If you don't have uh, uh, microphone or if we have problems with audio, I will read the question on your behalf. And later you can join discussions at uh, our forums uh, task.bioxcel.eu. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our today's presenter, uh, Dr. Vanya Calandrini, who is a researcher at the Computational Biomedicine Institute at the Ulich uh, Research Center in Germany. After she got her habilitation in physics at the University of Orleans in France, uh, she continued working on physiochemical processes shaping the signaling processes at subneural level. Now she's working on the development of models and computational methods describing the internal protein dynamics and transport phenomena. So uh, it's my pleasure now to change to Vanya to continue with the presentation. Okay, so thanks, uh, Ross, for uh, for the introduction, and thanks also for uh, this uh, invitation. So uh, today uh, I will talk about uh, an hybrid uh, molecular mechanics uh, cross grain uh, scheme, uh, which has been uh, uh, proved to be especially useful 
uh, to characterize uh, uh, ligand binding to proteins uh, with unknown 3D structure and low sequence uh, identity, which is uh, mostly the case uh, uh, of uh, many uh, big families of membrane proteins, uh, such as, for instance, uh, uh, protein coupled receptors. Um, actually, um, hybrid methods uh, are, in general, uh, the method of choice when both fast processes uh, on a small spatial scale and slow processes on larger uh, spatial scale are relevant uh, and you want to keep at the same time uh, the minimum number of degree of freedom of the problem. Um, for instance, in the case of ligand protein uh, binding, uh, uh, coarse grain approaches uh, uh, could be a priori adapted, but if you want uh, or if you are interested in the intrinsic uh, atomistic features of, of the recognition process, uh, uh, you need to maintain uh, an atomistic resolution at least uh, on the binding side. So exploiting the fact that the important high resolution details are spatially localized, you can couple uh, different resolutions, uh, uh, keeping at the same time uh, the minimum number of degree of freedom uh, of the problem. But there is something uh, more and uh, on top of this uh, reduction of degree of, of freedom and, and in this uh, uh, webinar I'll try to show you that uh, um, in some biologically relevant cases, uh, such as, for instance, membrane proteins or uh, GPCRs, uh, a big family of, of membrane proteins, uh, because of the intrinsic characteristic of the problem, hybrid methods are really strategic, uh, uh, if not uh, uh, unique, um, uh, not only for, uh, for the simple uh, uh, reduction of the degree of freedom. Um, um, to target uh, uh, this uh, important class of membrane proteins, uh, our group uh, started to uh, develop uh, a molecular mechanics coarse grain approach several years ago, and this is uh, also the reason why I put here so many people who contributed to this uh, uh, evolution. And so I will describe uh, uh, the methods uh, uh, as it is in its current implementation. And uh, I'll try, I'll describe also some recent uh, developments uh, to further improve the method uh, in order to allow uh, reliable estimation of ligand protein binding uh, um, energetics. Uh, so, if uh, uh, the structural determinants of uh, uh, a pharmaceutical target, uh, a receptor or an enzyme, are uh, experimentally known or uh, reliable structural predictions, uh, uh, or you can make uh, reliable structural predictions, uh, um, usually you can get highly accurate uh, ligand uh, poses uh, uh, by using a standard uh, uh, bioinformatics uh, based uh, uh, approaches, uh, docking, uh, uh, homology modeling, uh, docking. Uh, uh, however, uh, when these conditions are, are not verified, uh, for instance, uh, uh, this is the case for uh, membrane proteins uh, that uh, represents uh, that uh, represent as much as 60% uh, of the overall proteins uh, targeted by FDA approved drugs. Uh, um, these uh, approaches, uh, the application of these approaches is not so uh, straightforward. Um, so this, uh, why uh, it's so difficult in the case of membrane proteins uh, uh, apply standard approaches? Um, and why hybrid molecular mechanics coarse grain approach uh, are can, can be used to, to, to circumvent the problem. Um, actually, uh, for uh, membrane proteins, uh, we know the 3D, the 3D structures uh, only in about 2.5% of, of, of the cases of the, of, of the proteins, and for GPCRs in particular, around 5%. And moreover, the average sequence identity uh, between members of uh, uh, large families uh, of these uh, membrane proteins, uh, uh, such as G-protein uh, coupled receptors or voltage-gated ion channels, uh, is often uh, below 20%. Um, this 
this uh, uh, means that uh, uh, the template selection and the alignment for homology modeling is uh, far from trivial. Um, the probability to end up with uh, side chains orientation, uh, uh, inaccurate side chains orientation is quite high and uh, so the docking protocols are very difficult uh, uh, to, be, to be used in this condition. Um, even running uh, uh, extensive uh, plain MD uh, simulation or enhanced sampling methods on different initial models uh, uh, may require very long time to allow side chains to relax uh, to a correct free energy minimum. Um, and moreover, this may again end up with wrong orientations uh, uh, impacting the predicting uh, uh, power of the docking procedures. Um, uh, an alternative uh, is uh, uh, represented by coarse grain simulations, uh, but uh, again, they cannot describe the atomistic features of the, of the recognition between uh, proteins uh, and other ligands. Um, so this was for us uh, the, the, let's say, the main motivation to develop uh, an hybrid uh, molecular mechanics uh, coarse grain uh, uh, approach, specifically conceived to, to predict the ligand poses uh, in uh, membrane proteins uh, with low resolution models. Um, in this uh, uh, scheme, uh, the, the, the atomistic, uh, the molecular mechanics region uh, corresponds to the region of interest, uh, for instance, the receptor or binding site uh, along with the ligand and the, and the, and the, and the solvent uh, around. Um, in the uh, coarse grain region, uh, uh, far from the binding site, uh, each residue is uh, represented by a single uh, CG uh, bead centered on the C alpha atom. And uh, in order to ensure the backbone integrity, there is an intermediate region uh, that uh, uh, couples the two uh, region at different uh, uh, resolution. Um, in this way, we can get, we, uh, get rid of potential, uh, potentially wrong information coming from uh, uh, atomistic modeling of, uh, of side chains. Um, so this is uh, the potential energy function of the of the protein uh, uh, frame. So uh, there is uh, the E uh, mm uh, contribution uh, is uh, the uh, potential. Uh, uh, energy function of the molecular mechanics region. Uh, ECG is uh, uh, um, the potential term for the coarse grain uh, region. Uh, EI is that of the interface uh, uh, bridging the two uh, resolution uh, uh, regions. E, uh, I, MM, and uh, E, uh, CGI describe the interaction energies uh, uh, between the interface uh, and the molecular mechanics region and that between the interface and the coarse grain region. And uh, um, E, uh, MM, EI, and uh, E, MM, I are uh, currently represented uh, um, uh, by uh, uh, Gromos 96 force field. Um, uh, um, uh, ECG and uh, uh, ECGI are uh, uh, represented in terms of a go-like, uh, let's say, uh, model. Specifically, you see there is uh, this term that represents uh, uh, the bonding, uh, the bonded interaction between uh, consecutive uh, uh, bits. And uh, uh, this part uh, uh, represents uh, the non-bonded interaction in terms of a, uh, of a Morse, uh, of a Morse uh, uh, potential. And um, uh, then you see here uh, there is uh, uh, the uh, E, uh, uh, CG, uh, I uh, bonded uh, uh, term. 
uh, that ensure the integrity of the protein backbone and uh, um, you see here for, for uh, you, you have the bonded interactions uh, between uh, CG bits uh, and uh, the consecutive uh, C alpha atoms uh, uh, in the interface uh, as well as and you see here uh, the, 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 the non-bonded uh, uh, interactions uh, between the CG bits uh, and the C alpha and the C bit atoms uh, in the uh, interface. Um, in uh, in the let's say in the, the the first implementation we tested uh, this uh, uh, this um, uh, potential uh, for uh, two cytosolic proteins. Uh, uh, HIV type 1 virus uh, uh, aspartic protease um, and uh, the human secretase BAC. So before to move to, to, to uh, receptors, to, to membrane proteins, we first tested this, uh, this uh, scheme for um, cytosolic uh, uh, proteins and we, 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 we tuned the, the parameters, uh, uh, the cutoff, uh, the interface region thickness, uh, in order to reproduce uh, uh, the root mean square fluctuations uh, calculated with uh, plain uh, MD simulations. And uh, we further uh, tested uh, the accuracy of the model, uh, calculating uh, uh, the covariance matrix of the C alpha position fluctuations. Uh, and you see here uh, uh, the, 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 that uh, if you calculate the, the, the agent vectors uh, corresponding uh, uh, to the uh, plain MD simulations and uh, MMCG simulation, uh, you see that the most relevant uh, agent vectors uh, uh, almost uh, uh, coincide, which means that basically with uh, MMCG we are able to essentially recover the main uh, uh, the main aspect, the main features of the of the of the dynamics, and um, then okay, we are very happy with this. But uh, uh, in order to uh, proper uh, model membrane proteins, um, we need something more. Uh, specifically, uh, we have to take into account uh, uh, the solvation around uh, the binding site uh, and uh, also we have to take into account uh, the membrane protein uh, interactions. So we, uh, we added uh, five walls, uh, um, um, two hemispheres at the extracellular and the cytoplasmatic region of the, of the protein uh, to prevent water evaporation is uh, uh, fit 3 and fit 4 in, in, the, in the sketch. Uh, two planar walls uh, at the lipid head uh, and uh, um, uh, a wall uh, enveloping uh, the transmembrane uh, portion of, of the protein to mimic uh, the membrane. And specifically, uh, water evaporation from the atomistic region around the binding site is prevented by a softened Leonard Jones like potential, whose minimum is at a distance uh, RP from the hemispherical uh, boundary of the water droplet. And uh, um, uh, uh, as for water, water penetration in the transmembrane space uh, is uh, uh, prevented by a respulsive potential uh, proportional to 1 over d, where d is the distance from the, from the planar walls. Uh, um, and uh, uh, the protein membrane interaction is uh, uh, mimicked by a soft Leonard Jones like potential. Uh, with the minimum uh, at the distance RP from uh, this uh, virtual uh, wall uh, enveloping the transmembrane portion of, 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 uh, of, the, of the protein. Um, so then, uh, so this frame, uh, we tested this, 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 uh, this, uh, this frame, this, this model, um, on the human uh, beta-2 adrenergic uh, uh, receptor, uh, which is a, a GPCR, so a 
G protein coupled uh, uh, receptor uh, in complex uh, with its uh, inverse agonist uh, as uh, carazolol, for which the, the, the X ray structure and uh, uh, of, of the complex and MD simulations. Uh, are uh, available. And you see here um, the root mean square uh, fluctuation and the comparison between a plain MD simulation and, and MMCG simulations. Uh, in gray uh, here, uh, the residues uh, um, corresponding to the molecular mechanics uh, uh, region, and you see uh, in, in blue the MD and in black the MMCG, uh, and uh, you see there is a fair uh, uh, agreement, uh, 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 at least for, for, the, for the atoms uh, in the molecular mechanics uh, uh, part. Uh, still, there are some differences uh, uh, that can be, uh, let's say, uh, expected due to the different uh, force fields uh, uh, applied. Uh, uh, Amber 99 in the case of MD simulation and Gromos uh, in the case of uh, uh, molecular mechanics coarse grain uh, uh, simulation. Um, you see here uh, um, a, a snapshot of the of the of the binding site uh, obtained uh, from uh, uh, M MMCG uh, trajectory of, of the complex, and you see also uh, the uh, super superimposed uh, uh, positions of, of the of the of the ligand along the trajectories um, the, the let's say that the structural determinants of the active site are uh, are well maintained you see here in the panel uh, here the, the distribution of, of the distances between uh, the, the ligand and some key uh, uh, residues involved in the binding with the with the with the ligand apart from this specific uh, um, hydrogen uh, bond the the, the agreement is uh, quite, uh, let's say, quite good between uh, plain MD simulation and, and, and uh, MMCG. And uh, then, uh, um, okay, after, uh, after the, 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 the calibration through the uh, beta-2 uh, uh, beta-adrenergic uh, receptor, we have also applied our uh, MMCG uh, scheme to other GPCRs, uh, in particular uh, the beta test res receptors uh, uh, 38 and 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 46, um, and again the aim uh, was to determine the binding poses uh, of their uh, agonists, uh, and uh, uh, this is a very uh, challenging uh, uh, application because uh, again for this uh, GPCRs so we don't have uh, any structural information and the sequence identity with the template is less than uh, 20%. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, our MMCG models uh, were consistent uh, with uh, almost uh, all uh, site-directed uh, mutagenesis uh, experiments uh, uh, available, and uh, we were also able to um, uh, find uh, an intermediate uh, binding site in addition to the standard binding site, uh, which again is uh, is compatible with uh, with uh, experiments. Uh, um, so the, let's say that uh, at least uh, so far with this method, uh, we are quite confident to be to be to be able to determine at least uh, uh, the, the the structural the main uh, features of, of of the binding from the structural point of view. Of the binding of the of the of ligands uh, to 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 these uh, membrane uh, proteins, uh, but um, 
uh, despite uh, uh, all uh, the, the improvement in, in the in the system uh, due to the to the addition of the of the hydration water uh, of the membrane uh, and so on and so forth, uh, still um, some artifacts uh, uh, can be uh, may be introduced uh, in the in the solvent dynamics because of the boundary potential added. Uh, uh, to prevent water evaporation from the from the from the binding uh, uh, site, so for this uh, um, uh, sound alternative could be the implementation of a, a dual resolution modeling for the solvent, such as the so-called Hamiltonian-based. Uh, uh, adaptive resolution scheme, which has been recently proposed uh, by uh, Raffaello Potestio and uh, Kurt uh, uh, Kramer. Um, within this uh, uh, scheme, uh, water is uh, uh, described with fully atomistic with full atomistic resolution in the molecular mechanics uh, uh, region. Uh, and uh, uh, a coarse grain representation outside uh, uh, the molecular mechanics uh, uh, region. Uh, the, the interface between these two subdomains uh, uh, again consists of a hybrid resolution region where water molecules uh, change on the fly their resolution, so they freely diffuse in and out of the molecular mechanics uh, uh, region. Uh, removing this way possible artifacts introduced by the confining potential. And to, to, to couple uh, um, the atomistic and the coarse grain potentials at the interface, uh, H-address uh, interpolates uh, the, the Hamiltonians of the two, uh, of the two uh, regions. And, uh, and we are very happy with this because uh, uh, H-address by each address uh, preserves by construction the Hamiltonian framework, uh, which uh, uh, a priori uh, uh, allows a rigorous uh, uh, ligand binding uh, uh, free energy uh, uh, calculations. Um, so, um, let's say toward the implementation of this uh, scheme uh, in our uh, MMCG uh, uh, method, um, in collaboration with uh, Raffaello Potestio, uh, we have applied for the first time uh, the H address scheme uh, to uh, cytosolic proteins uh, in, in, uh, in, in water. Um, for this first uh, application, uh, the proteins uh, is fully atomistic, uh, so, so only the solvent is treated, uh, treated with this dual resolution uh, scheme based on, on, on H address. And the aim of this, uh, uh, of this work uh, was to demonstrate the applicability of the method also to water solvating complex biological systems, uh, because so far was only the, 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 the method was only tested uh, for water in water, basically. And so for this, we compared the uh, structural and dynamical properties of, of, uh, of proteins uh, in, in solvent uh, computed with both H address uh, uh, simulation and fully atomistic simulations. And uh, uh, as a test cases, uh, uh, we used the etox uh, uh, one and, and cyclophylline, um, two globular proteins with that, some differences uh, uh, for the folding is a bit different for, for, for these two uh, proteins. And uh, um, and uh, you see here in this scheme, uh, um, uh, you see here in the scheme uh, DAT. Uh, this DAT indicates the, the radius of the atomistic uh, uh, region, and we varied the, 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 the thickness of the atomistic region uh, in order to determine uh, the optimal thickness of the molecular mechanics part in order to reproduce correctly all the, the properties, all dynamical and structural properties of protein and, and solvent as well. Um, 
you see here uh, uh, the, the, the Hamiltonian uh, of the system. Uh, so uh, you have the, the kinetic energy, uh, then you have uh, uh, this term for all atom bonded and non bonded interactions uh, uh, internal to the protein and the all atom non bonded protein water interactions. And uh, here, um, here you have uh, this term uh, that uh, uh, represents uh, the hybrid uh, non-bonded uh, potential energy contribution of each water uh, molecule. Um, uh, VMM uh, represents the uh, SPC uh, force field, so the atomistic uh, uh, force field, and uh, uh, um, VCG, uh, the coarse grain uh, potential. And this, this term is derived from an independent uh, all atom simulation on pure water through uh, an iterative uh, Boltzmann inversion uh, uh, procedure. And then you have this, this term, this correction term uh, called the uh, uh, Gibbs free energy compensation term. Um, uh, ah, before to move to the correction term, uh, you see here in the in the hybrid uh, uh, part, uh, uh, you see there is this lambda function that smoothly uh, couples the, the, the two level of of, uh, of, description, of description, the molecular mechanics part and the, and the CG part. You see here the function that uh, going from one. Uh, for the molecular mechanics part to, to zero for the CG uh, part. Um, so in this, this, this correction term uh, contains basically two contribution, uh, a contribution that uh, to compensate uh, the so-called uh, drift force that arises uh, from the coupling of the coarse grain and the uh, MM uh, Hamiltonians and uh, a second term that compensates for the so-called uh, thermodynamic uh, force. Um, and you see here uh, some comparison between uh, uh, all atoms uh, simulations and H address uh, simulation. So the secondary structure elements are maintained. Uh, and uh, uh, if you look at the root mean square fluctuations, uh, uh, there is a very good uh, uh, agreement. Uh, and also, uh, if you look, uh, for instance, uh, at the power spectrum of the dipole-dipole correlation, uh, dipole-dipole uh, uh, time correlation function, um, again, the agreement uh, uh, between all atoms and each other simulation is, uh, is, uh, is very good. Um, now, if you look at the at the at the solvent, um, you see here uh, the radial density profile of water uh, from the center of the atomistic uh, region uh, to the coarse grain uh, uh, region, and uh, um, uh, you see uh, here for for each address uh, uh, simulations the, the the density profile is uh, almost uh, uh, almost uh, uh, flat, uh, so you, so you have basically the same the same density in all of the region of the of the of the system. And uh, if you look also at the mean square displacement of, of, of water, um, again, both for uh, the bulk and for the hydration uh, layers, uh, again, each address uh, is in a good agreement with uh, uh, all atoms uh, uh, MD uh, simulations. Um, so, um, in general, uh, we do not see any important variation in the protein dynamics or flexibility or uh, structure um, by, by, by reducing the atomistic radius uh, of the, of the, in, in the molecular mechanics uh, uh, part. Uh, um, the same is true for, for water structural properties uh, and, and for translational diffusion. Uh, 
uh, whilst uh, uh, the orientational dynamics of water is quite sensitive to the to the atomistic thickness and for instance uh, you see here uh, in this plot uh, um, for uh, thickness of the atomistic part of the order of uh, 1.6 uh, nanometer you have a uh, 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 a discrepancy between uh, uh, MD and the uh, H address of the order of uh, 10% and uh, of course if you decrease uh, the thickness of, of the atomistic part uh, this, uh, this um, discrepancy uh, increases uh, uh, more, uh, more and more. So uh, the next step for us uh, is uh, to uh, implement uh, um, this uh, H address uh, scheme uh, together with uh, with our uh, our uh, um, MMCG uh, um, uh, potential for for uh, membrane protein and this is uh, uh, part of the work of one of uh, our PhD students, uh, uh, Thomas Torenzi, and this work uh, is uh, will be done in collaboration with uh, with uh, uh, Raffaello Potestio. Uh, so thank you for for your attention, and uh, I think now I have to move to the question and answer session. Yes. Thank you, Vanya, for the very nice presentation. Now we start our questions and answer session from the listeners. So everyone, uh, please use the chat panel on the control panel. There's the chat section where uh, don't chat actually the questions. You can also use the chat. I'm monitoring both to ask your question. So the first question we have is from Luca Maggi, and I will. Now see if, uh, <clears throat> if we can hear each other. Luca, could you say something? I'm not sure whether your audio works. Okay. Can you hear oh, me? There you are. Yes. yes. No, so okay. the microphone is yours. You can uh, ask your question directly. Okay. Hi, Vanya. Thank you Hi. for uh, your presentation. And then I was wondering if you are planning to use uh, a different force field in the MMCG scheme. Uh, yeah, this is uh, one of the of the um, uh, of the future uh, development. Uh, specifically, we are working to implement uh, amber force field. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I found that mm, using ligands, it's uh, sometimes yeah. it's 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 very difficult to use gromos because uh, you have problems, and then okay, yeah, 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 uh, absolutely, yes, yeah. Uh, this amber seems to be at least the the, the standard for this uh, for this kind of of, uh, of problem, and this this is for us the the the, the main motivation, let's say, to 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 implement. We are uh, actually we are. Uh, already uh, working uh, on this and we are doing uh, right now uh, preliminary test uh, and of course uh, all the parameters uh, of the of the force field have to be tuned for the coarse grain uh, part uh, um, in order to, uh, to 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 couple in the proper way the the coarse grain part with the with the atomistic uh, with the atomistic uh, part with the atomistic region. Let's say so. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Luca. Our next question is from Alberto Due Pietre. Unfortunately. Uh, his audio doesn't uh, work, so I will read uh, the question on his behalf. And he would like to know if you could comment on the correction of the thermodynamics force. Uh, uh, yes, so um, 
with the w let's say that with the with the first uh, uh, correction uh, you you remove so on average the the, the drift force uh, but uh, um, you cannot uh, uh, let's say remove the density imbalance uh, originating from uh, uh, the different uh, virial pressure on the on the CG and MM uh, subsystems. Um, so, in, in, in terms of, of the grand potential, uh, PV means that the, the, the grand potential is uh, for identical volumes uh, is uh, different in the CG and in the MM part, while the compressibility, for instance, remains unchanged because uh, you use uh, uh, the 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 um, you use uh, uh, and you, you tune the CG uh, potential uh, to match the radial distribution function of the atomistic water. So uh, uh, by construction, the compressibilities are unchanged. Uh, but this is not true for 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 the virial pressure. So in order to enforce a uniform density, uh, you have to introduce a compensating force. This this uh, this. Um, um, this uh, second term, um, and uh, basically you can show that uh, uh, the integral of this force across the hybrid uh, region, so the, the work performed by this force on a molecule crossing the, the hybrid interface, can be approximated by the ratio between the local pressure profile and uh, the reference target density. So this is the the, the, the origin and, and the of the of the of the of this uh, second correction uh, term and and the form of this uh, correction uh, term. Thank you. Uh, how about if you have further comments, please write them in the questions box. Our next question is from Anna. Pochicchio, uh, if I cross correctly. So, Anna, let's see. Um, so, now you'll be able to ask your question directly. Hey, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we hear you. Okay, okay. So, thank you for the nice talk. Um, I have a curiosity, let's say. So, when you uh, tested the MMCG on the beta adrenergic, you started from the X-ray structure, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So, so the ligand is already in the good binding force. But yep. did you test what might happen when you start from a bronch mm, binding force or conformation? Uh, yes, uh, uh, so we, we did also uh, some tests uh, in this in this direction. So we started with with let, let's say uh, wrong binding poses. Uh, so with the ligand very far from from the from the binding site, uh, and uh, after uh, on average after 100 200 nanosecond, uh, the the uh, the the, the the ligand uh, uh, migrates to the good uh, binding pose. So it's, let's say that we are quite confident that uh, also starting in, from very, quite wrong uh, uh, configurations, so we, we are more or less able to recover the, 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 the correct uh, uh, binding uh, uh, poses. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we have a question from Joan. Uh, okay, so you can speak up. Can you hear us? <clears throat> okay, maybe there is some uh, problem with audio. I will read uh, the question on your behalf. Uh, John is asking to learn more about the main applications of this hybrid method. Uh, in other words, which are the biological processes that allow us to study in comparison with only molecular mechanical codes? Uh, 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 
this is especially interesting so in general uh, as I said uh, uh, hybrid molecular mechanics uh, coarse grain uh, uh, methods uh, are interesting uh, to uh, for instance uh, to reduce the degree of freedom if uh, you, 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 you need a um, high resolution only in a specific region of your uh, of your system um, assuming that you have a, a good way to couple uh, the, the high resolution region with the coarser uh, uh, resolution uh, region this is a good way, let's say, to reduce the degree of freedom. So a priori you could increase uh, the, the, the size or the complexity of, of, your, of your system just because uh, uh, you are, uh, on the other side, you are reducing the degree of freedom of, of the system. But for us, uh, at least for, for in the case of GPCRs, uh, 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 the, 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 the interest in, in using uh, uh, these uh, hybrid methods, uh, uh, in particular molecular mechanics, coarse grain uh, part, uh, is intrinsic to the system because, uh, as I said, uh, 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 the, 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 the system, um, uh, we don't know, for most of these uh, proteins, uh, we don't know the, the structure uh, the 3D uh, structures and, and the sequence identity, if you try with uh, homology modeling, uh, uh, the sequence identity is very low. So the models that you can uh, obtain with standard bioinformatics uh, uh, approaches uh, are, are, uh, are, let's say, not uh, uh, reliable. We, for instance, we also tried in our institute to, to run uh, MD simulations, uh, standard plain MD simulations, uh, starting from this uh, uh, models, uh, but uh, it's it's almost uh, uh, impossible to infer any information because uh, you may uh, experience uh, unfolding uh, or uh, uh, very uh, strange behavior because the the, the the orientation of the side chains uh, uh, is uh, very uh, maybe is is wrong and uh, uh, so you it's. Uh, really uh, difficult to to converge uh, to the good orientation to the to the to some f meaningful uh, uh, free energy minimum but in, on top of this uh, in most of the case uh, you see really unfolding so very strange uh, uh, behavior instead uh, with this uh, mmcg uh, approach uh, let's say that we remove uh, all uh, the 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 potentially wrong uh, information the information that is not essential uh, uh, to the problem. So we keep the minimum uh, amount of information, for instance in the part far from the binding site we use a coarse grain uh, representation just to have the, the essential flexibility and to transmit this flexibility also to the, to the binding site, but no more than this because basically we need only this and, and, uh, and it's at least so far, uh, this was the best strategy, let's say, to, to in our experience, uh, to uh, address uh, binding, uh, ligand binding uh, uh, problems to GPCRs or membrane proteins uh, with, uh, without, uh, uh, with, uh, with unknown uh, 3D structures and low sequence identity. Thank you, Vanya. I hope uh, this was uh, sufficient. If you have additional questions, please write it in the box. Uh, I was uh, wondering, Vanya, I have a question to uh, what, what are the maximum sizes that uh, you have, uh, sizes of uh, systems that you have uh, worked with? What, what is the limit of the method given the computers that we have at the moment? But so, so, so far, uh, we we don't have any uh, special uh, uh, limitation in the sense that this MMCG approach is uh, uh, embedded in uh, uh, Gromax. So the engine is uh, is uh, is uh, Gromax. Um, so it performs. Uh, 
quite uh, well, let's say, at least uh, uh, the same performance of, of, uh, of uh, Gromax. Um, the size of our system, uh, at least uh, so far, is uh, quite uh, uh, quite small because we started with uh, the binding of small ligand to the to the binding uh, to to this uh, to GPCRs. But in principle, you can imagine to increase the size of the system or or uh, increase the complexity of your of your systems, uh, adding other other. Uh, following along the same lines, uh, uh, adding uh, other uh, proteins or whatever, or other or larger ligands or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, we, we, one of uh, our participants, Dikios Mario, is uh, raising his hand. So, uh, can we hear each other? Would you like to ask a question? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, there you go. Oh, okay. oh, well, that's great. It's the first time I use this, so I'm a little <laughs> bit confused. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you very much for this very interesting talk. I finally see after decades that people realize what I was doing in the 80s, <laughs> namely the coarse plane business. You know? <laughs> Because yeah. you can't do you you can't be the world policeman that follows all the motions of all the particles in the world. You have to represent the solvent, especially in the biggest part of the system, by coarse graining. And I have introduced the PMF process for that, that explains things explain things that has, have not been explained by MD by by all atomic MD up to date. So I, I predicted in 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 the eight, in eighty four. I predicted with very rough structural model for ions and water, the transition between left-handed DNA, right-handed DNA, and left-handed DNA, the busy transition. Nobody working in the area of the, of the uh, uh, brute force stimulations that are pervading all science nowadays uh, has ever been able to predict this because their, their DNAs, they disappear. They are poly ions and they dissociate. You cannot hold them together. But they keep, you know, supporting the brute force methods ad infinitum, forget everything that has been done in the last 30 years. And now, fortunately, young people come in and they start to refine this business. And a final comment I have is that you don't need the coupling between uh, uh, with the grain canonical ensemble and the in-betweens and all this stuff. You don't need all this if if, a big if, if the relaxation times involved in relaxing the water, which are obtainable from, anim, from, from nuclear spin resonance or whatever, if these are fast compared to your emotions, yeah, then, yeah, you just, yeah. then you just need my PMF approach, nothing else, for the water, for the ions, for whatever you have. If you are interested to, co to, to, to collaborate with me, I'm retired, I don't have a group, I don't have funding, but I am still doing active science. If you are interested to collaborate with me, please contact me. Yes, yes, of course, uh, you can left on the on the chat or maybe you can, no, you have also my address email, so you can send me your your article and, uh, and uh, of no, course I don't, you can I, contact I, it's me. It's not an article, it's, it's uh, 60 articles. I have the last, Perfect. the last, <laughs> The last, the, the last week, uh, you know, it's imp it's impossible. The people do not do not know the literature before the uh, b before the uh, introduction of the scanning and all the stuff. Yeah. And, uh, I, I if you want to uh, to collaborate with me, uh, I, I would uh, uh, I would very much like to do this because uh, uh, I w I see that finally my 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 concepts are being realized at least partly but in a very obscure and awkward way. You don't need all this. Okay. You will gain a lot. You will gain a lot by contacting me. Believe me. Okay. My name is, is Dikeos Mario Sumpasis. Sumpasis. S-O-U-M-P-A-S-S-I-S. -S -S -S. You can find me in the ResearchGate. You can find me in Google. 
you can find me in some places, but I am not connected with with some groups, etc. I'm I'm just doing my work alone now because I'm retired. Okay, will be a pleasure. Uh, could you okay. please uh, say again the spelling uh, of, of your of your name? My name is S S, like uh, like uh, Sienna S Sienna. Yeah, yeah. S O Otto. Otto. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I have the the name of uh, of uh, Vicky's Mario uh, here. Ah, perfect. So I can okay. send you both uh, okay. email. Thanks. Like, search. Thank yeah. you very much for the talk, though, because this question, you know, with the relaxation times, is very important for me for other reasons too. So if you have from your simulations where you will try to do this with the Grand Canonical and all the stuff, you know, eh? Uh, no. This is the, uh, if you have some some data on on times involved. So what are the characteristic times of your ligand of your of your protein signs co compared to water yeah. distribution relaxation times? Uh, I I think at least for the hydration water, uh, I think that they are not so. Uh, uh, different uh, because uh, you know in the, in the for the hydration water you have this sub diffusive uh, phenomena so the time scale uh, can be very uh, very uh, uh, slow um, but at least so far we are testing only it's mainly let's say the the, the, the uh, structural properties uh, uh, of the of the of the system. Of course, the next step is to to characterize the the, the dynamics and to compare in a quantitative uh, in a quantitative uh, uh, way. Exactly. Uh, so, but I, I of course I I. I I get the point. So, of, of course, if if you have a big, uh, um, if the time scales are well uh, separated. separated, let's say, yes. uh, you don't need. Uh, you don't need all this uh, yeah. uh, simulation yeah. with different ensembles. Yeah, that's it. You know. So uh, yeah. this was this was the strategy I introduced, as I tell you, beginning 1984, for all yeah. biopolymers, whether they are polyions, whether they are DNA, the, uh, proteins, or whatever you have, you can use it in docking, you can use it in protein, protein interactions, you can use it everywhere, and it gives you very good results compared to experiments. Yeah. So I, I don't know this method, so I, I have to I have yes. to admit. Uh, <laughs> so I have to go through the literature. Please take a, a, take a, a little bit of time to look at it, and then you can you can contact me by, uh, by you can contact me in ResearchGate or, or Link Edmo. Thank you. Perfect. Because this is a this is a very uh, interesting discussion. Uh, I'm afraid we are approaching uh, the hour. And, uh, thank you very much. Yes, thank you too. Um, we are approaching the hour, and with which we will uh, finish our webinar. I want to remind you that at our forums at asbotoxel.eu, you are very welcome to post any questions and continue with uh, topics of your interest. And uh, yes, thank you again, Vanya, for the great Thanks. talk. Thanks and, for the invitation. Yes, and uh, everybody have a great time over the upcoming holidays. Next year we are preparing a bunch of very exciting talks in our webinar series, so, so stay tuned. Uh, we will add you to our newsletter mailing list uh, and so that you can learn about uh, the new talks that might be very interesting for you and your colleagues. So with this uh, we are finishing and we will get again together next year. Have a good evening everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening.